Two Ukrainian boxing champions killed in battle, sports officials say. Two Ukrainian boxing champions, Ole Pridki and Alexei Yenin, have died while defending their country during Russia's invasion, according to sports officials. Prudki, a former light welterweight champion of Ukraine, died battling Russian forces on Sunday, the Ukrainian Boxing Federation said in an Instagram post Monday. Your victories and achievements are hard to count, you were a very persistent and hard-working athlete, you trained a lot. You have been a worthy example for future generations, the Cherkasy Boxing Federation wrote. Prudki is survived by his wife and two young daughters. Yenin, a Ukrainian kickboxing champion and Muay Thai world champion, died in April while battling Russian and pro Russian forces in Mariupol, Ukraine's Ministry of Youth and Sports said Tuesday. Alexei Yenin, an athlete and serviceman of the Azov Special Purpose Detachment of the National Guard of Ukraine, died in the battle for Mariupol, the ministry said. He met a full-scale invasion of the Russian occupiers in eastern Ukraine and was one of those heroes who bravely defended the hero city of Mariupol. Yenin is survived by his wife and son. Declassified U.S. intelligence shows Russian blockade of Ukraine. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has effectively halted all maritime trade at Ukrainian ports, according to newly declassified U.S. intelligence cutting off a critical export commodity for Ukraine and risking a global food crisis. In the months since Russia moved to invade in February, it has established an effective blockade in the northern third of the Black Sea, according to a U.S. official who provided a declassified map of the region to CNN on the condition of anonymity. The map analyzes the density of ships coming in and out of Ukrainian ports before and after the start of the conflict showing an almost total drop-off of commercial traffic to ports in the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov after the start of the invasion. A third map provides a current visualization of the density of Russian naval vessels clustered in the Black Sea off Ukraine's coast, highlighting hotbeds of activity, according to the U.S. official. The impact of Russia's actions cannot be understated as Ukraine's seaborne exports are vital to global food security, the U.S. official said echoing the broad assessment of Western analysts and government officials. Ukraine provides about 10% of the world's wheat exports, the official noted, the vast majority of which exit the country from Black Sea ports. Some context, before the war, Ukraine was the world's fourth-largest exporter of corn and fifth-largest exporter of wheat, according to the U.S. State Department. Almost 30% of global trade in wheat came from Russia and Ukraine alone. The United Nations World Food Program, which helps combat global food insecurity, buys about half of its wheat from Ukraine each year and has warned of dire consequences if Ukrainian ports are not opened up. Last week, CNN reported that the U.S. and allies are holding discussions on how to safely develop routes to transport grain from Ukraine amid concerns about global food supplies. New satellite images reported by CNN on Monday appear to substantiate Ukrainian claims that Russia is also stealing stores of grain that have been sitting idle at commercial ports. Since the start of the conflict, Russia has intimidated commercial traffic, occasionally impeded safe passage to Ukraine through the Kerch Strait and, most visibly, stationed warships off Ukraine's coast and pummeled Ukrainian ports, the U.S. official said. English Premier League approves sale of Chelsea Football Club. The English Premier League said Tuesday that its board has approved the sale of Chelsea Football Club to the ownership group led by Todd Bolly. The deal, worth more than $5 million, must still receive government approval before the transaction can be finalized. The Premier League board has today approved the proposed takeover of Chelsea Football Club by the Todd Bolly slash Clear Lake Consortium, the league said in its statement. Russia owner under sanctions, the club's current owner is Russian oligarch Roman Abramovich, who is subject to sanctions by the British government and has seen his assets frozen. Abramovich put Chelsea up for sale in early March following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, saying at the time it was in the best interest of the club. The Premier League statement noted Bali had passed the board's Premier League's owners and directors test.
Bali owns stakes in the MLB's Los Angeles Dodgers, the NBA's Los Angeles Lakers and the WNBA's Los Angeles Sparks. Regional Military Chief, Ukrainian forces have withdrawn from contested town of Svetlodarsk. Pavlo Karolinko, the head of the Donetsk Regional Military Administration, said Tuesday that Russian forces had taken the contested town of Svetlodarsk in the eastern Donbas region and that Ukrainian forces had withdrawn. About 10,000 civilians remain in occupied Svetlodarsk, Karolinko said. No more than 30 percent of the population left the city. Today, May 24, the Russian army entered Svetlodarsk in the Donetsk region. Russian flags have already been hoisted there. According to Kirilenko, Svetlodarsk had been surrounded on three sides, and that the city had not been under intense shelling, so much of the civilian population remained. This is not a retreat, of the armed forces of Ukraine, but a regrouping, he said. This is the right and logical decision in this situation to save the lives of, the military, and regroup. Pro-Russian telegram channels showed images of the Russian flag being hoisted over the city administration building in Svetlodarsk. Kirilink also described the situation as very difficult in Lyman, a city further north in Donetsk region. It's now under constant fire, he said. The enemy entered the territory of the Lyman community a long time ago. Their main goal is to take the center of the community of Lyman. The estuary is now partially under control, they enter, then they are kicked out, heavy artillery drives in, and tanks enter the outskirts of the city to conduct shelling and occupy the entire center and the entire Lyman community. The situation there is now one of the tensest along the entire front line, along with Aldiuka. Mariupol death toll at 22,000, says mayor's advisor. Mariupol is now a city of ghosts. An advisor to the mayor of the ruined Ukrainian port city said Tuesday. Dot speaking to CNN's Melissa Bell, Petro Andriy Ushchenko, who has fled to Ukrainian held territory, said that Mariupol town hall officials believe that at least 22,000 residents of the city were killed during three months of war, a figure that cannot be independently supported, with the free press now unable to get access to the city and those still inside too scared to speak openly. The figure of 22,000 is based, Andriy Ushchenko said, on the many contacts he and other town hall officials continued to have with officials trapped inside. But he believes the actual figure could be much higher. Andriy Ushchenko said that the process of reburying the dead has been complicated by Russian official insistence that reclaimed bodies be brought to a morgue and that a person claiming a body must agree to record a video in which the applicant says the deceased was killed by the Ukrainian military. Andriy Ushchenko said that, based on the information gathered from his network of sources, Mariupol tonight is a city thrown back to the Middle Ages. It is absolutely dark inside the city. The only lights are from Russian troops and Russian patrols, he said. Everywhere it's the smell of death and the smell of fire. The mayor's advisor said his contacts paint a picture of a city in the grips of a humanitarian catastrophe with very little contact to the outside world. Mobile phone connections are only just beginning to be re-established. He said residents are unable to move freely, with special passes needed for any movement within the city and a filtration system keeping them from fleeing altogether. Mariupol has been at the center of a ferocious, months-long battle between Ukrainian government forces and Russian soldiers and pro-Russian fighters. It officially fell to Russian forces Friday when the last group of the Azov steel fighters at the steel plant they had been holding out in for several weeks surrendered. Hungarian Prime Minister announces state of emergency due to war in Ukraine. Hungary will enter a state of emergency due to the war in Ukraine, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban said in a video posted on his official Facebook account on Tuesday. Hungary must stay out of this war and protect families' financial security. To do this, we need room for maneuver and the ability to act immediately, Orban said. The state of emergency is set to go into effect starting at midnight local time on Wednesday, according to Orban, who did not give details regarding the extent of the emergency powers.
The Prime Minister said he would share more details regarding his decision on Wednesday. This would not be the first time Hungary has activated a state of emergency. A bill was passed during the COVID-19 pandemic in March 2020 that allowed Orban to rule by decree. Hungary also recently voiced its opposition to a proposal from the European Union to ban imports of Russian oil, saying it will not support such a measure. Russia would still pose threat to peace in Europe even after possible ceasefire, Polish foreign minister says. Russia would remain a threat for peace in Europe even after a ceasefire in Ukraine, Polish Foreign Minister Zbigniew Rao said on Tuesday. That Russia changes immediately after a ceasefire has been agreed is daydreaming. It would remain a danger for peace in Europe, Rao said during a joint press conference with his German counterpart Annalena Baerbock. Rao said he feared a Russian invasion into Poland, as well as the danger of an armed invasion of the countries in the NATO eastern flank. Poland and Germany must strive for Russia to suffer a strategic defeat and its occupation forces to leave Ukraine within the borders recognized by international law, Rao also said. Baerbock also made clear that the Donetsk region belonged to Ukraine, saying, Ukraine is a sovereign state within its borders and this is true for now, this is true since 2014 and this is true for the future. French Foreign Minister pushes for another round of Russia sanctions. The European Union needs to adopt its sixth package of sanctions against Russia soon, according to France's Minister for Europe and Foreign Affairs Catherine Colonna. Speaking during a joint press conference in Berlin with her German counterpart, Colonna stressed the need to strengthen our support to Ukraine. We have to quickly adopt the sixth package of sanctions, which will foresee the progressive end of the imports of Russian oil said Colonna, who was appointed to her role last week. Despite opposition from countries like Hungary, Colonna said she is optimistic that the package will be approved and commended the remarkable unity shown by the EU in holding Russia accountable. We have to continue because it is this unity that is our strength, Colonna emphasized. Russia's invasion contributing to rise in severe food insecurity in Latin America and Caribbean, officials say. Russia's invasion of Ukraine is contributing to a sharp rise in the number of people suffering from severe food insecurity in Latin America and the Caribbean, the United Nations World Food Programme warned in a statement Tuesday, heaping more pressure on a region that is already suffering from the fallout of COVID-19 and the effects of climate change. Between December 2021 and March 2022, the WFP said that, According to recent surveys conducted by the organization, the number of people suffering due to severe food insecurity shot up by more than 500,000. Russia began its invasion of Ukraine on February 24. Millions of people could be pushed into poverty and hunger if the conflict in Ukraine continues. The region is already dealing with COVID-19, rising costs and climate extremes, said Lolo Castro. WFP's regional director for Latin America and the Caribbean. We could return to food insecurity peaks seen during the height of the pandemic, as job and income losses, food inflation and other driving factors batter the most vulnerable people. The WFP said the war in Ukraine has led to a surge in commodity and energy prices, which is leading to a rise in food inflation that threatens the region since several countries are highly dependent on cereal imports. It added that Caribbean nations that import substantial amounts of food will be particularly affected due to soaring sea freight costs. Before the war, Wheat supplies from Russia and Ukraine accounted for almost 30% of global trade, and Ukraine is the world's fourth-largest exporter of corn and the fifth-largest exporter of wheat, according to the U.S. State Department. The WFP, which helps combat global food insecurity, buys about half of its wheat from Ukraine each year and has warned of dire consequences if Ukrainian ports are not opened up. Since the war began, Russia has been blocking Ukraine from exporting goods from its ports, fueling fears of a global food crisis. Russia has blocked almost all ports and all, so to speak, maritime opportunities to export food, our grain, barley, sunflower and more, 
Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said Saturday. The U.S. and Ukraine have also accused Russia of stealing Ukrainian grain supplies, which Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov says is fake news, according to Russian state news agencies. CNN has viewed satellite images that show two Russian ships stocking and loading up with what is believed to be stolen Ukrainian grain. CNN also tracked a Russian ship carrying Ukrainian grain from Crimea to Syria after being turned away from ports in Egypt and Lebanon. It's just past 7 p.m. in Kyiv. Here's what you need to know now. Eight top Russian security officials said Russian forces are not chasing deadlines in Ukraine, as Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky called for continuing economic and political pressure on Moscow. If you're just reading in now, here are some of the latest developments of the war in Ukraine. Ukraine shows drone footage, the Ukrainian military for the first time released footage of special forces using small, foreign-made drones to target Russian positions. The portable, so-called kamikaze drones carry warheads and detonate on impact. NATO leader says there is support for new members, NATO member countries broadly support welcoming Finland and Sweden into the alliance, Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said in Davos. A brewing food crisis, the head of the UN World Food Programme called on Russian President Vladimir Putin to reopen ports in Ukraine to exports to prevent children around the world from starving. The President of the European Commission earlier accused Putin of weaponizing food supplies. Russia's theft of Ukrainian grain appears to be ramping up, according to new satellite photos. Russia's undefined timeline, Nikolai Patrushev the head of Russia's Security Council, said in published remarks that Russian forces aren't chasing deadlines in Ukraine, suggesting a possibly open-ended timeline for Moscow's invasion. Zelensky addresses World Economic Forum, the Ukrainian president told an audience in Davos that Kyiv is prepared for a prisoner exchange with Russia and also urged world leaders to keep the political pressure on Russia in any way they can. Russian oil embargo could come soon. Ursula von der Leyen, the president of the European Commission, said an embargo on Russian oil could be in place in a matter of weeks. Ukrainian Prosecutor General charges Russians, the prosecutor's office said it had charged members of the Russian military and a Russian mercenary group as suspects in the murder of Olya Sukhenko, the mayor of a Ukrainian village, and two family members.